Adverse impact in human resources refers to employment practices that can appear neutral but can discriminate against a subsegment or group of employees. In the U.S., the federal government has defined a list of protected groups against which a company cannot discriminate. For example, a company cannot discriminate against a particular race, sex, or age. Unfortunately, it's quite possible to occasionally discriminate against a group accidentally in HR processes. That's why there are mathematical tests that human resource and legal departments can perform to make sure that processes aren't discriminatory. You may be wondering what HR processes I'm talking about. HR is generally responsible for hiring new employees, administering promotions, leading training and development plans, ensuring performance appraisals are completed, and executing RIFs. RIF is just an acronym that stands for a reduction in force, which is more commonly known as downsizing, right-sizing, or making employees redundant. When companies plan a large reduction in their workforce, such as the elimination of multiple departments at once, it's a best practice to conduct an impact analysis first to ensure that the group of employees being made redundant isn't made up of mostly one gender or one ethnicity or one age group. Essentially, a company would want to ensure that they aren't disproportionately impacting any of the protected groups that I had on the screen a few minutes ago. As an important note, the protected groups I've shown you are for the USA. You will need to research whether your country or region has defined specific groups for your area. How then exactly do we conduct a test to see if our HR processes will or are impacting one protected group more than another? There are two ways that are generally accepted. The first is known as the four-fifths rule or 80% rule, and the second is a statistical test. Each method has its benefits and has its flaws, which I will discuss later. But for now, let's learn how to conduct an adverse impact analysis using the four-fifths rule. For this example, we're going to test the hiring process. We want to conduct an adverse impact analysis to see whether our hiring process is biased against any one ethnicity. The first step in testing the hiring process is to select the factor to test. In this example, I have picked ethnicity as the factor. For each ethnicity, we calculate the selection rate. This means we calculate the percentage of each ethnicity that was actually hired based on the number that applied. I'll show you some numbers in just a second. We note the group that has the highest hiring rate. We then compare all other rates to the highest rate to see how different they are. Specifically, we calculate impact ratios by dividing each of the hiring rates by the highest hiring rate. We then look to see if any of the impact ratios are less than 80% or 0.8. Let's look at some numbers, which will make it much easier to see how to do this test. For this fictitious company, 120 people applied for jobs in the last year. 80 identified themselves as white and 40 identified themselves as Hispanic. For white applicants, 48 were hired from the 80, giving a hiring rate of 0.6 or 60%. For Hispanics, 12 were hired from the 40 applicants, which gives us a selection rate of 0.3 or 30%. The largest selection rate is 0.6. We then divide our other selection rate of 0.3 by 0.6 to get a value of 0.5. Since the impact ratio on the bottom line of this table is 0.5 and less than 0.8, we can conclude that the hiring process may be biased when analyzing the factor of ethnicity. The four-fifths rule has been a long-time rule of thumb, especially when it comes to arguing bias in a courtroom, but it has a few problems. When sample sizes are small, such as the example we just completed, it can be subject to large sampling errors. Dealing with hiring data can also be tricky since many candidates choose not to identify characteristics such as ethnicity, gender, and age. This method will incorrectly show adverse impact 20% of the time when there are 50 or fewer hires. However, it's a widely accepted test since it's simple to calculate and requires no knowledge of statistics. The second method does require knowledge of statistics. You can use the chi-score test to compare actual frequencies, 
the number of times something happens, to expected frequencies, the number of times you expect something to happen. On the screen is a table showing what is compared during this test. First, we have overall data at the bottom of the table, which says that typically 20% of people pass a test that is given during the hiring process, regardless of their gender. On the top half of the table, we have recorded how many men and women actually passed the test. We can see that the numbers differ slightly from our expected values, but it is possible through normal variation that these numbers are actually okay. What the statistical test does is that it compares the differences between our actual data to our expected data, and it tells us whether the difference is large enough that we probably have an adverse impact against one of the genders. For those that like statistics, I'll put some information in the resources section on running the actual test. On this screen, I've listed a few more statistical tests and the business questions that they can help you answer if you are performing analytics for human resource departments. Particularly in large companies, these tests are conducted periodically to ensure that HR processes remain fair for everyone. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to press like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive a message when new videos are released. You can also explore the other videos in this series or visit our website for more information on how to use data analysis to improve your business.